We'll see if everything goes according to plan. Tomorrow is gonna be day one of fasting. As you guys, I did already fast, but this was like about a year and three months ago. So I wanna try it again. And what better opportunity than when you're quarantined? So it's either eat a lot of junk food or fast. So I'm gonna try my best to do the second option. <laughs> when I really think about it, it was a very, very hard experience, but it was exactly what I wanted and really what I needed at the time. I thought now I'm at home, I'm quarantined, mandatory, because I came back from a foreign country. So I have this mandatory 14 day quarantine. If I don't challenge myself to try to fast now, I don't see myself ever doing it again, if that kind of makes sense. Um, I, I just felt like it was the perfect time to have this inner challenge like i mentioned on a mental level physical level and emotional level although at the time i didn't realize it was going to be all three of those things i was just thinking about it on a physical level as in you know i love to eat and i think sometimes i feel like food really controls me more than it should and i I did want to change this relationship that I have with food and hopefully kind of start a catalyst for the way I want my life to look like both on the inside and on the outside. And I am making this video three months later because I wanted to fast again after that first initial experience. I wanted to have another opportunity and another one to do it and to gain more experience and more perspective on it and, and really see how I felt and what worked, what didn't, and what I would change. So I've done a water fast, a four day water fast, three times at this point. The video you're about to see is the footage from my very, very first one. So before I show you the whole vlog that I made, I just wanted to tell you the main reasons why I wanted to fast. I've listed them all. I have them all to remind me, entering autophagy, autophagy, I don't know how to pronounce that, when your body breaks down any cellular waste, toxic damage cells, it increases your microbiome, when your resistance to bad microbes as well as the diversity and increase in good microbes can occur, uh, you burn fat from your adipose stores, meaning that you know how your body stores fat for later for when you need it well the fast is when you need it so your body uses that and you lose uh, you can lose quite a bit of fat you have mental clarity which i really really experienced especially in the morning when i woke up i felt very very focused and alert your human growth hormone increases which increases your metabolism and i have to be honest with you i know a lot of people say you know after you fast oh uh, you just put on all the weight back but I, I haven't experienced that. Skin benefits, that's one of my favorite things is just how baby smooth and soft your skin becomes. And like I mentioned before, controlling your relationship with food. So all of these in one way or another were reasons why I wanted to fast. And above all, like I said, I wanted to challenge myself and I felt like this was not only the right time, it was the necessary time to do so and get rid of the toxic buildup of not only my physical body but also mentally and emotionally in terms of how I perceive myself and my relationship with food and the world around me so without further ado I've been talking long enough here is the video from three months back and you'll see I look quite quite different yeah I wanted to wait for my quarantine glow up to like make this video for you guys but no Honestly, I can say that that initial fast is what made me, was what was the catalyst for this kind of inner outer glow up in that after fasting, I felt like, okay, if I can have this much control over my body and my mind, imagine how I can apply that control to any other aspect of my life. And so I started... I started working more, I started eating better, I started working out more, I started doing more of my hobbies. I was just doing more in all areas of my life while feeling at peace because I was doing what challenged me and what I wanted to do and I was really committing myself to those things. And that's one thing that fasting showed me is that you can commit to something and you can overcome the barriers that you think your mind sets and imposes upon you. 
So, without further ado, I think I've said that like three times. But oh, this is the last thing I'm gonna eat today. I think it's about five o'clock. Nice and Thanksgiving y, like, like it's a chilly autumn day. And here eating this indoors, watching the sunset. So it's almost midnight and I'm basically starving, even though I'm about to go to sleep. If I could eat right now, I would be eating. I would eat a falafel sandwich and one of those lava cakes for sure. It's the next morning. I just got out of the shower. That's why I look like a ugly newborn baby. But <laughs> when I woke up, I felt hungry, but that went away. Like, you know, sometimes in the morning, at least for me that I don't eat breakfast, you feel hungry when you wake up, but then it kind of goes away and you're like, oh, it was just a little craving or you drink some water. I'm going to go drink some water. I didn't do that. And when I was in the shower, I felt okay, but I felt like really lightheaded, like you know like i haven't eaten so i'm gonna go drink some water and go sit down <laughs> my, that, those are gonna be my two main activities drinking water and sitting down okay so it's been about 27 hours i feel hungry but it's kind of dull hunger feeling that's constantly there it's nothing like sharp pangs of hunger just wanted to show you the tea that i'm drinking which i brought from japan because i loved it and I couldn't leave it there there's like still 15 tea bags left in here so it's jasmine green tea and believe me believe me it's not the same drinking green tea in Japan is like drinking green tea like that is green tea you know so I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't go back to the European tea bags I got really really hot uh yeah I'm like sweating actually anyway, I just stood up I got out of bed I felt like a really really old person like Honestly, it was hard to move. I was even in my bed for three hours, three hours, just reading, watching videos because I had no energy to get up, like absolutely no physical energy. But I felt like I had a lot of mental energy. Actually, when I woke up, I felt so kind of alert. I felt really, really alert. I could kind of pick out little sounds uh, in the environment, you know, like little sounds of from the outdoors, from upstairs, from machines and devices in the house. And I felt really kind of tuned in to all the sounds around me and I felt focused as in my mind felt really clear. I definitely didn't have any of that kind of, you know, fog you feel when, I just want to show you guys how it's doing, any of that brain fog you feel after eating a big meal or a lot of sugar, none of that. Like I felt really really good um uh, mentally but physically like i'm just so 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 weak and it's super weird because i feel like fine in this snow you know how cold must it be outside to be snowing at least below zero but i feel fine because i was so so hot inside five minutes later now i'm really really cold and <laughs> i think it's just you know i mean <laughs> Maybe I'm using too much energy now to talk because I've been talking with my mom and all my body's like, well, stop. Why are we bringing the blood to your brain to think? Let me give you some updates now. It's been officially 48 hours since I started my fast, which hopefully means there's still 48 hours to go. I just spent a half hour watching like cooking TikToks, so cinnamon buns and pizza and all that carbohydrate goodness um if i think about foods i want to eat though the thing that i want to eat most that keeps popping up in my head is a crunchy juicy apple so it's not even like right now i mean of course i could eat i could eat pad thai i could eat sushi but what i would really love to eat in this moment like what i would crave is just an apple so my last little oh my god my voice What's wrong with it my last little update before going to sleep i was really craving some curry some nice thick spicy curry about five minutes ago so that's where i'm at check back in with you after my skin looks really good i'm like so happy about it okay good night good morning i feel really good i have a lot of energy i feel very focused mentally my brain feels very clear, no clouds in there, no fog, no weird weather patterns, just like a clear sunny day in my mind. Okay.
and yeah i woke up really full of energy i didn't even put my alarm i didn't set my alarm and i woke up the same time i did yesterday and the day before which is 9 30 without setting an alarm and that's really interesting um between these three days i've slept i think an average of eight or nine hours every day and woken up consistently around the same time so guys i have to tell you ever since i started making my bed seven months ago yeah it was only seven months ago i started doing it regularly before i was the kind of person that's like what's the point in making your bed you're just gonna sleep in it you're just gonna mess it up after but honestly it makes me feel much better about starting my day and much more uh ready to take on the day and refreshed 76 hours in and i'm just spacing out on these bananas over here so mom has been freaking sitting out in the hallway because she thinks I can't handle myself. I mean, it does smell really good. Like, it, oh my God, it looks so good. And I haven't done a video in like, I don't know, the past 20 hours. Your girl has not been feeling too good. Um, okay, so let's detail what happened since the last time I updated you. So... When I went to go to bed, I actually went to bed a little bit later, around 1.30, because I felt like I still did have a lot of energy mentally, but physically I felt really weak. I was like a drunk toddler, like I was like holding onto the wall sometimes. I went to sleep. I still woke up around 9.45 with no alarm, as I have been the past three days. So that is pretty, pretty cool. I woke up though, I felt week i really did and when i was in the shower i just felt like like i could not stand up for one more second i was like okay uh i gotta get out of here and by that i mean i just like sat in my towel on the toilet and then my stomach started hurting a lot a lot, a lot. i asked my mom can you bring me my water bottle and she did I drank some water, I sat a little more, then I went in my bed and I put my towel in my hair and I just sat on top of my bed naked with my towel on my head like, I just sat like that. Like I was cold, I was really cold, but I could not have the energy to move under the covers or take the towel off. Um, so eventually I did and I asked my mom if she could put some salt in the water and that made me feel a lot better just drinking a cup of water with a bit of salt and so I actually went to sleep for like three hours just slept for three hours uh, today I think was the worst morning slash afternoon out of all the days we've reached uh four days sorry my hands are so cold they look really bad I'm really looking forward to eat like I don't know what people say you know when they're <laughs> talking about Oh my god, I feel short of breath when they're talking about their fasting experience and they're like, oh, after the second day, I felt no hunger. Like, what? I am so hungry. Like, I am hungry. I just really wanted to try this and apparently it's a really good thing to eat when you're breaking your fast. Just some broth with bone, beef bone essence. Let's drop it in there. <laughs> And we're ready. All right, guys, it's time. 97 and a half hours later. Let's do it. Also, since I was in Japan, I really learned to eat soup just by drinking it because they don't use spoons there for their soup. Like if the soup has chunks, you'll or like noodles, you will use chopsticks. And then the rest of it, you'll just drink it. No need for a spoon. I mean, the less dishwashing sounds good to me. Mmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it has a lot of taste a really strong intense savory taste as if i were eating teriyaki chicken kind of we got ourselves a nice miso soup straight from japan i bought these little packets well i kind of stole them from my old workplace but i have some beets and cabbage it's like i can taste every piece of the dirt that this thing grew up in the pickled cabbage like sauerkraut oh so far so good i'll wait a little bit to start on this avocado i still could eat more I really could. I could have eaten another half of the avocado, 
some bread with mm, some toast with cream cheese. This is how I'm gonna break the fast today with this soup that has uh, carrots, herbs. And round two of soup. Well, it's technically round three because I ate two bowls of the other one. This is my miso soup again. Mmm, look what we got here. I'm gonna shake it up. So it's good, no added sugar because I'm not, I'm gonna try to not eat sugar for another five days. <laughs> Some more cabbage and like yesterday. I feel like I could eat more. I really do, but I don't want to over exaggerate now. <laughs> Just in case. So this is my dinner. It's the chopped spinach sauteed with kefir and salt and half an avocado. That's mom's. Probably I'll eat some potatoes from her too. So mom made this delicious soup. We found a recipe because you know, eating some soft, mushy vegetables well cooked is what she should do. So here we have a soup that's cauliflower, broccoli, and potato. I also added kefir for those probiotics, you know, and some cheese. So I was finally craving those bananas I've been staring at longingly. It is so good. I'm literally gonna be eating bananas instead of chocolate now. So the lie detector test determined that was a lie. Oh, just look at these. Can't stop eating them. I think I'm gonna have like a stomach ache or something. Actually, my grandma, when she was 18, she ate so many strawberries that she developed an allergy to them. A cucumber, green pepper, black olive, green olive, and za'atar spice salad, and with olive oil too. It's the first time I've eaten raw vegetables since I broke my fast because they're, you know, harder on your, um, on your digestion. Mm. These are a traditional Romanian food. Well, I guess they're quite Eastern European, even Turkish, you could say. And they're cabbage leaves stuffed with, well, you can choose meat, which is quite typical, or this one is a vegetarian one with um, mushrooms. A really traditional Romanian snack. They're called pufulets. I just couldn't resist resist them. I'll read you the ingredients, but they're very simple. So I think I think they're suitable. Oh my god, beautiful! So it's this thing called zakuska, and it's a red pepper and vegetable kind of paste. Mmm. This is the first time I ate bread in a week. Guys, so I want to tell you about the super strange thing that happened yesterday. So it was about 11.30 at night. You know, usually I try to stop eating between 8 and 9 for intermittent fasting. But I was like, 11.30, you know what? I would love to have an apple. Like, I was just craving an apple. It wasn't for hunger purposes or anything. Just wanted that, you know, nice, juicy crunch, right? So I start eating the apple. I finished the apple. Shortly after, maybe a half hour, I start getting really a heavy feeling in my stomach and I feel quite bloated over time and the bloating kind of increases and then my my digestive system it just feels so sluggish and I start having quite a lot of TMI gas the next morning I woke up I felt like as if I had just eaten a pack of Oreos or something I swear to you I felt so bad a few moments later the first time I'm eating let's say a dessert added refined sugars um, since I started fasting. So let's see what my body and my brain thinks about these Snickers. This is gonna sound really sad, but it's exactly how I felt when I quit eating sugar for 25 days last year. And like, it tastes good, but I'm not usually like when I eat sugar, I'm already thinking about the next bite as I'm chewing what's in my mouth, so. This time, I just feel like, okay, that was a bite. Like, I could just put it down and stop eating it. I don't want to build up that same tolerance to sugar because it wasn't good. Although I wish I could enjoy it a little more <laughs> than I just did. So you guys saw that little piece I ate. Um, I have a headache and I feel a little bit nauseous right now. 
like the sugar addict like me what why 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 me why so in this part of the video i want to talk to you about the things i wish i had done differently during my first fast or things that i did do differently in my subsequent fast my second fast my third fast and what difference they made. So my very first point is going to be about electrolytes. As you saw in my very first fast, I only, my mom, added a little bit of salt to my water on the last day, the last few hours of my fast because I felt so weak. Now, before I started this fast, I didn't research enough information regarding electrolytes and how essential they are to many of your bodily functions. I'm going to read some of the information I gathered. So sodium, this is one of the big ones, and it says that it actually can help with cramps and muscle spasms. The second one is potassium. This is supposed to keep your heart functioning well, your energy high. The third one is magnesium. Magnesium it says to help regulate muscle function and nerve function. I would have liked to have a supplement or supplements during my first fast. And in my second and third fasts, what I did do is I was taking sodium regularly, regularly from day one. Squeezing the fresh juice from these fruits into my water really just helped me get through the fast, to be honest. I felt much more motivated to drink the water with that tangy, sour taste. And usually I love water. I'm an avid water drinker. Like I'm always worried about where I'm going to pee because I'm drinking so much water. But while fasting, I just, I did not want to drink any water at all. And, and adding the citrus during my second and third fasts really helped me meet the, the standards of water that I should be drinking. Started watching YouTube videos of other people's experience with water fasting and seeing what they learned from it and what they got from it and what they would change uh, whereas before I kind of just went into it blind I was like seeing it as a challenge and not as something that could be potentially harmful if you don't educate yourself so I definitely would have educated myself more from the first time around this is a little bit of a strange one but I would have fasted during warmer or sunnier weather so during my first fast it was the end of March there was still snow outside it was still snowing it was cold we didn't have a lot of sunlight it was kind of miserable to be honest with you but during my second fast and especially my third fast that was last month in May, I felt so good just being outside in the sun. I was taking naps outside in the garden, just looking at everything around me, enjoying nature, lying on the grass and have the weather influence my mood in a positive way. So that's it. Those are the things that I wish I had known or changed or done differently during my fast the first time around. Thanks for watching this video guys. I encourage you to gather as much information as you can and read up on fasting and really see if it's right for you and if the amount of time that you want to do it for is right for you. Be thoughtful and be honest with yourself about how you feel and remember it's okay to break the fast earlier than you anticipated and I really recommend fasting with someone else around, so especially for me that first time. On the fourth day of my first fast, I felt so weak. If my mom hadn't put salt in my water bottle, um, I don't know, I honestly, I had no energy to stand up, like to move. I don't know what I would have done without another person in the house with me. At least that made me feel way more uh, secure, way calmer. So I do encourage you to tell someone that you're fasting or maybe someone can uh, be next to you, near you, or just know that you're fasting. I personally would not fast for four days in an apartment alone, uh, even now. Now that I have fasted a couple of times, I would still would not do it alone. If you want to subscribe, please go ahead, join us for some more random videos and stay safe and stay healthy. Bye guys.